Everyone, welcome to another edition of Founder Wisdom Podcast. Today we have Hank Holiday with us. He is Meta Founder and Managing Partner at Quorum.1. Hank, glad to have you here. It's going to be a short one, but powerful one. Can you introduce yourself? Tell us a bit more about Quorum. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm a I'm an engineer and an entrepreneur um, and uh, a designer and kind of an armchair uh, economist here and there. And um, I've also been doing kind of business technology consulting for the past you know, 15 years, uh, something like that. And uh, over the last couple of years, I've been working with a group of seven other founding partners uh, to create this collective that we call Quorum One. So Quorum One is a uh, a professional collective made up of kind of technologists and creatives and entrepreneurs and project managers and, you know, <laughs> designers and all kinds of other types of folks and subject matter experts. Um, and in large part, what we what we do is we, we we bring together kind of four different components under this this one big umbrella. We uh, we're a professional network. We run a full service consultancy. We uh, run what we call like a professional learning academy, uh, with internships and apprenticeships and mentorships and, and coaching and all that. And then we run an early stage uh, product incubator, particularly in the uh, areas of uh, like B2B technology and B2B SaaS. So. Interesting. You guys do consulting very differently. I introduced you as a meta founder. What's a meta founder? <laughs> so um, a, meta, a meta founder in our context uh, really just uh, indicates that um, uh, Quorum One is a de decentralized organization. So we're we're a, a big fan of. Uh, we have a lot of folks who are kind of in the in the Web three and blockchain space in general. Although um, most of our consulting is with tr uh, traditional companies, uh, a lot of like VC backed startups and uh, Fortune five hundreds and and uh, and like legacy companies and stuff. But um, but in that Web3 space, there's this concept of a, of a DAO, a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Um, Quorum One is what I consider to be a proto-DAO, <laughs> meaning that we're not actually uh, running a DAO right now, although we are we are building one, but but uh, we're sort of moving in that direction. Um, and from our earliest incorporation, we've wanted to run ourselves in a primarily decentralized way, in a way where uh, leadership and organizational structure emerges from the bottom up rather than being imposed from the top down. And so part of that is kind of rethinking a lot of traditional titles um, and, uh, and, and and just really making it clear that there's no kind of one person that's in charge. Uh, and so that means is we had a group of eight people that came together and were our founders. Um, uh, the reason I'm the meta founder is just because I was kind of the initial instigator, uh, the, the person who helped kind of put some of those founding pieces in place that allowed the founding partners to to, to come together. But um, but at the same time, I'm just one of eight people that, that uh, you know, that founded Quorum One. Why did consulting needed to be reinvented? It's a good question. Um, I think you know, I've been in the professional services space for a while. And I think when I, when I started with this, um, you know, when I started with, you know, dreaming of the ideas around Quorum One, this idea of a collective agency, a collective consultancy, and by the way, lots of other folks that, that I particularly, I talked to a lot of these, these folks over, over the years since starting Quorum, um, I, you know, a lot of people said, oh, I've like tried to create a, a different type of cooperative agency. And so I think a lot of, um, a lot of folks have kind of who who've done a lot of work in the professional services space um, have kind of seen a similar thing that that I saw and that that the other founding partners of Quorum saw, um, which is that that there's a lot of siloing inside of consulting. You have a lot of these boutique, small shops, um, you know, either led by one really awesome person or led by a very small group of of awesome people who then sort of bring in earlier stage, lower cost resources, mark up their margins. Um, uh, but but ultimately, they're competing with these really giant shops, these, you know, mega consultancies, your, your you know, Deloitte's and Accenture's and, um, and even like a, another tier of more industry focused players, but still really big bureaucratic, um, you know, top down oriented uh, consultancies. And, and in the consulting market, and I, at first, I came at this from a Salesforce lens. But as we started to dig in, we saw that because um, my background is in Salesforce, business systems, engineering, consulting. But as we dug in, we saw that 
Um, actually, this is kind of universal to most forms of knowledge work. Uh, uh, you know, in, in finance, lawyers like uh, operate a lot of times in this way, um, in a lot of like creative disciplines. Um, but in a lot of different professional services, you'll see this issue where you have these giant consultancies kind of cranking out mediocre work, but doing a great job of sales and marketing and business development. Um, and you have these small boutiques that are cranking out really high quality work, but really struggling to compete in, in that environment. Uh, and so what we saw an opportunity for is, look, what, what does it look like to create a, a safe space for all of these smaller players to come together and get some of the benefits of scale, but without uh, getting a lot of the downsides that come up, uh, come with traditional top-down uh, partner-centric extractive uh, in, you know, incorporating models. I love the model. Uh, just that, let's say that you know I'm top. I'm top in my field, which is GTM and uh, cold outreach. And say you would have me in the team as a consultant, I wouldn't describe myself as greedy, but I'm really money oriented. And it's not that I don't like to share. It's just that I find that sometimes if you put like a bunch of superstar in one room, I think the bill is going to be huge for the client. Um, how do you deal with that? Yeah, so I, I think that's actually part of the motivation for for creating Quorum in the first place was this uh, realization that a lot of us, a lot of the, the founding partners of Quorum, but also the people we brought in right after that, and the people that continue to flow in today, are on some level uh, or another are, are are badasses. They're they're rock stars. Uh, you know those kind of unicorn type resources that can drive a lot of value, that command a really high hourly rate. Um, and, and what we realized is, you know, what I realized was as a, as a, as a sort of uh, singularly effective consulting resource myself, um, I was kind of trapped by my own success. Um, one of the hardest things to do was to get other people like me to come work for me. Because <laughs> it, it was like, all right, look, like, hey, hey, like, hey, hey you know, lady or guy or, or whatever, right? Like, that I've worked with before, like, come work on this project with me. They're like, eh, like, it's part of your consultancy. It has your name on it. Like, I've got my own consultancy. I've got my own startup. Um, and, you know, they might do the same to me. And I would say the same thing. I'm like, look, I've got my own thing going on. I don't want to come work for your thing. And so, it, so it's, it's beautiful on one level, but it's also isolating. If everybody's trapped in these little, these little silos. So I think question is, how do you get those people to come together? Um, I, I, I think, first of all, by offering them radical flexibility, by not giving them another boss, right? By just saying, hey, look, come be part of a collective of other really awesome people. Um, and, uh, and you know, in exchange, you'll get op an opportunity to collaborate on bigger things, more interesting things. You'll get support and opportunities to coach and mentor kind of the next generation of folks, which is something that a lot, a lot of people, when they're kind of, you know, all of their time is taken up, uh, you know, doing really high value work. A lot of times they don't make enough time to coach and mentor other folks. Um, and and the environment that that you that you create, the culture you have to, you create has to be very focused on um, peer based trust relationships. And so I, I think that's that's the other the other key thing. Like if you can offer some of these unicorn type resources. Uh, like a group to be a part of that doesn't take anything away from them, but gives them extra superpowers um, and offers them radical flexibility and ultimately makes their their working lives more fun. Um, you will get them to say yes, uh, and and they'll come in. Uh, they'll look around and they'll eventually realize what I've realized, which is that it's it's way more fun to be part of a team, a particular team of other peers um, and people who are more expert than you in a lot of ways. Uh, and that's what pushes us to do our best work. And so ultimately it's that, that personal growth and that, that joy of work of, and of keep continu continuously pushing yourself that, um, that, that particularly the, the, the top performers um, out there in the industry, that's what the motivates us all really. Love it. I want to discuss the, these last few minutes about your devil's hack. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of interesting to me. I think I'm going to probably try something similar next year. Tell us about your experience there and uh, what you got from it. Yeah, uh, so I went to uh, to Davos to attend a lot of the events around the World Economic Forum uh, just this past January. It was it was my first time. Um, I, I went with uh, with a whole bunch of other folks who uh, were kind of you know seasoned hands there. Uh, it is a it is a a really interesting place. Um, I definitely. Uh, 
I would recommend going, uh, particularly for folks who kind of dream big uh, and have you know, an aspirational quality to the work that they're doing. Um, it was a lot more accessible than I thought it would be. It's actually pretty easy to go there. You don't have to uh, be, you know, invited to the to the core event or, or be one of the global elites to actually to actually attend. But um, if you can sort of get yourself there and, you know, pay for an Airbnb for, for a week, um, what's waiting for you is uh, a bunch of really inspiring conversations, uh, a, 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 like a, a very dense collection of, of thought leaders and um, <laughs> CEOs and, and other uh, really uh, powerful people who are doing interesting things. And I was personally surprised at how open a lot of the conversations were uh, and about how open some of these thought leaders were to um, to considering alternative ways to to to, to structure <laughs> um, uh, their approaches um, to their to their businesses and their governments. So it's it's a fun place. I yeah, it's, I mean, networking and this day and age can be interesting. I also think, well, I mean, if you take it the right way, I think Davos. There's a lot of important people meeting at one place. And yeah, to have these folks as clients or connection is definitely a good thing uh, for business uh, to the least. And the hack here is just, yeah, to, to book uh, the hotel room Airbnb there. And as you told me, there's events outside of it. So I, I didn't know that. I thought that like Davos and the WEF was straight up like, yeah, what people did, but there's ah. other it's, networking events, people party it, and stuff. It, it's it's easy. In fact, most of the events that are at, at uh, in Davos uh, during, uh, you know, WEF week um, are, uh, you don't need to have any any particular badge uh, or, or anything to get get into them. Um, I definitely recommend if uh, you know if and when you do go uh, to connect with uh, Undavos. Uh, there's a sort of group called Undavos, which uh, led by this guy Mark Terrell, and uh, uh, they do great work at trying to bring uh, more folks, uh, you know, to Davos for WEF Week uh, and and make everything a little bit more accessible. So. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is to try to figure out how to get a hotel badge, uh, which is what gives you access to some of the more the more interesting areas. So hmm. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, you can uh, you can post about that one on your LinkedIn. Where can people find out more about you, Hank? Yeah, um, I got a I got a personal website uh, at Hank dot holiday. Um, and uh, and they can also just track me down on LinkedIn. If you search for Hank Holiday, I come up as like, I think, the, usually the first person. So, uh, yeah, track me down. Shoot me a LinkedIn request. I'm happy to happy with chat, chat with folks particularly interested in uh, bringing about the future of work, capitalism, and democracy. 